6.4, scatter plots and trend lines. What is a scatter plot? A scatter plot is a plot that point, uh, Oh, I hope there's an outtake video. <laughs> All right, we're going to start again in three, two. Hi, I'm Mr. Craig. Today we're going to learn about scatter plots and trend lines. We're starting off today with the do now, and I want you all to take a couple of seconds here to do this. Uh, we have you rounding the following uh, decimals to the nearest hundredths place, and then we have you identifying some points in the graph. You're going to be using this in today's lesson, so take a quick second to go ahead and do this, and then we're going to go over them. Okay, so we're doing rounding to the nearest hundredths place. So the first thing we need to know is where the hundredth place is at. And the way I usually jokingly say that is uh, two butt cheeks makes a hundredth place. So you got one, oh, I gotta be writing here with my pen, so sorry, this is my first time using this software. Mr. Nelson is laughing at me. So you see I go back two places, two butt cheeks, and that gives me the hundredth place, right? So, um, to do this problem, I know I need to go to the hundredth place. So I look at my decimal, and I go back two butt cheeks, so I know I'm there, and that gets me the eight as my hundredth place. And I look at the number before that eight, and I realize that that is a seven. Does the seven, is the seven greater than or less than five? It's greater than five, so therefore it'll round up. The seven turns the eight to a nine, so we end up with 3.59, and we don't write anything else after that. Does that make sense? Uh, hopefully, because it can answer your questions if you have one. Um, the next one, 9.334. We need to round to the hundredth place, so we know that's two butt cheeks makes a, a decimal. So we go one, two. That's where I need to be getting to. But the number before that three, that's the four, I, um, we see that that's less than five, and less than five means that we don't round up. So this just re gets rewritten as not, oh, that's a horrible nine. Mr. Cray cannot write with a with a stylus pen. What we're going to try again is 9.33. And I'm sorry for my handwriting there. All right, so the next one then, 10.899. 10.899, I do the two butt cheeks. So I'm stopping there. But when I look at the number before that, I see that it's a 9. And what does 9 do? 9 is bigger than 5, so it's going to round up. The 9, though, rounds that 9 up to a 10. and so we have the nine going to a 10, rounds that up. That nine goes to 10, that eight becomes a nine. And so we end up with 10.90. Now, some people would argue, well, why don't we just write 10.9, Mr. Craig? Well, because we are rounding to the hundreds place, we like to let people know that that number needs to be a part of my answer. So 10.90 is what I need. All right, and finally six, it says round to the hundreds place. And we say, well, wait a second, this is only a six. But remember, just like your age, if you are, for instance, 15, you don't tell people you're a 15 point. But if I have a six, six is assumed to be six point. And so if I'm rounding two decimal places, I mean, hundredth place, that's two decimal places back. So I'll, that's going there. So I add two zeros in. And so six rounded to the hundredth place is 6.00. It's not more than six. It's just showing that we're going to the hundredth place. All right, going on to graphing. Quick reminder on graphing, remember that you have an x-axis and you have a y-axis, and that to graph an ordered pair, you need an x and a y-axis. Um, so if we look at our first point, point five, let's see, by the way, anybody remember our quadrants, this is your quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And everything in quadrant one is gonna be plus plus, so that, that gives me a little hint there. So I see I have to go over one, two, three, four. So that would be my X value. And I'm going up one, two, three, four, five. So I have the ordered pair for X, I have a four. And for my Y value, I have a five. Cool beads. I'm gonna erase that really quick. We're gonna move on to the next one. So my next point, six. Six is in quadrant two. Everything in quadrant two is negative, positive. And sure enough, if I'm going back this way, I'm going on the x-axis, negative one, negative two, negative three, right? And then to go up to the x, I'm going up one, so that becomes plus one. And so my ordered pair, x and y, should be negative three, comma, one. So I graph the second point. Finally, 
My third point, it seems to be on the Y axis. So when I look, I'm not going to the right or the left, right or the left, so I'm on the zero. So my first, my X value is going to be zero, right? And then if you look, I'm going down one, two, three, four, five, six. If I'm going down six, that's negative. So I have the ordered pair zero, because I did not go left or right, and then I have down negative six. So those are my three repair. Hopefully everybody remembers how to do that. Cool. <laughs> 6 6.4 scatter plots and trend lines. What is a scatter plot? A scatter plot is a graph of plotted points that show a relationship or lack of between two sets of data. The example, the example given here is we have a graph that we labeled ice cream cells versus temperature. Notice that the, the graph is labeled with it as well as the table that it came from. Now the points that we have, if you notice, aren't in any kind of order. That's okay, when you have the graphs, when you have data you collect, you don't always collect stuff in order. People give stuff randomly. As long though as the temperature is attached to the corresponding ice cream that it went with, everything should be fine. So. What do we do with a scatter plot? What we do is we take, um, think of it as the first values are the X values and the second values are the Y values. And just like plotting points on a graph, we can plot these points on our scatter plot. The hardest part here being that we gotta make sure that the points will fit in our scale. So they notice that this scale went from 10 to 26. Um, because our data points, the lowest one I can see here is 11.9, and the highest one I can see here is about a 25.1. So we want everything to fit, and since we weren't going to go by points, we kind of just put by, went by uh, twos, and that way you can kind of estimate where they belong. On the money side, our lowest number we have actually is 185, but we went ahead and went to zero here, just to sort of give you some space here. Um, just so you can see where this line is going from. So all we do then is we take these points, these X values and these Y values, and put them together as if they're an ordered pair. So as, for instance, 14.2 comma 215. That is, looks awful horribly, but that is a point that we are then going to graph on our data, right? So once we're done graphing these things, you'll notice that all these points sort of form um, a pattern. If, if you will. You can kind of see this sort of trend that as the temperatures went up, ice cream cells went up and you can see this sort of trend forming. So if I sort of, you can almost picture a line kind of going through my data, you can see that, that things are trending up. As the temperatures increase, ice cream cells increase. And you as a student could picture this as well, that if you're out and it's really hot, the hotter it gets, the more ice cream kind of sounds good to you. So this is called the correlation. A correlation is a connection between two or more variables. In this case, we're seeing the connection between temperature and ice cream. However, we need to be careful though. Even though I do see that these, as one goes up, as we see this increase, um, as we're seeing the X values increase, we're seeing the Y values increase. Um, just because we have a correlation doesn't mean that one causes the other. Now in this case, with the ice cream and uh, temperature, you could see a causation. You could say, okay, well, as it gets hotter outside, people tend to want more ice cream. However, um, let's give another example. Here is an example of a correlation that does not mean causation. If you look, it looks almost the same, but if you're careful, you see on the side here, we, see, we have ice cream cells again. I have ice cream cells here, and on the, but on the bottom here, I have sunglass cells here. So it's showing as my ice my sunglass cells go up, so do my ice cream cells. So is that saying to you then, does that suggest that as more people buy sunglasses, they need to have ice cream? Or that if you're so cool that you're eating ice cream that you have to start uh, wearing sunglasses? That seems silly. So sometimes, even though you do, and again, we can see this sort of trend going up. You can almost picture this line that is being formed here. Um, with this data kind of going in a, in a positive direction. Um, even though we see that there is a correlation, one is going up, the other one is, is going up as well, 
um, we cannot say that one is causing the other one. Could we perhaps maybe think of something that might be another factor? And if hopefully what popped in your head is maybe the sun. The sun, give a little smiley face, there's our sun. I know, I'm a great artist. Um, our sun is nice and bright. And so when it's bright, people want to buy shades, right? To protect your eyes. Also, the sun is hot. And when things are hot, people tend to want to eat more ice cream. So you could conceivably think of the fact that if it was a hot day, people would eat more ice cream. And if it was a hot day, the sun would be out and you'd want to have more sun. People would want more sunglasses. So again, um, while we did see a positive correlation, we could think of a third factor. In this case, the third factor being that the sun is what is causing the purchase of sunglasses and ice cream. So let's go down that path then and let's talk about some more ridiculous things that can happen. So here's some stuff we found just to be silly. Mr. Nelson and I looked online and we found a site that showed silly correlations. And so here's a silly correlation. correlation. It says the number of people uh, uh, who drown by falling into a pool. So somebody fell in, ah, and then they drowned. And then the second thing that's being correlated to is films Nicolas Cage appeared in. Now, Nicolas Cage is, you might know him from films like National Treasure or Ghost Rider. If you don't know him, he's old. I get it. But for the rest of us who can kind of see that, so he's this actor. And so we're, we're seeing that here the, in the black is a Nicolas Cage films, right? As we see these Nicolas Cage films happen, we see that there is a corresponding drownings. So when Nicolas Cage, for instance, in 2007, when Nicolas Cage starred in three films, there were um, 120 drownings. Whereas in a year where Nicolas Cage only uh, starred in one film, there were only, looks like about uh, 90 drownings. So it seems like the obvious answer here, obviously, is that we have to stop Nicolas Cage from filming movies because people keep drowning. Now, a quick thought of that should make you realize that that is ridiculous. So uh, here's the, the perfect example why correlation does not cause causation. Here's another simple one. Letters in the winning word, uh, letters uh, in the winning word of Scripps National Spelling Bee. So the words, the number of words used to use in the word uh, that people were spelling versus the number of people killed by venomous spiders. So it shows here in the red is the um, number of letters and in the black is the number of venomous spider people killed by venomous spiders so we, we see here that when there was looks like maybe nine or uh letters in the spelling there were uh approximately six deaths whereas when there were uh it looks like more like 12 or 13 letters in the in the winning word there were 15 deaths by spider so obviously what we need to do here is when we have a spelling bee, we obviously need to make people spell words like I, it, and an, and keep the deaths down. Again, once again, if you think about that, that is just absolutely ridiculous. Just because two things are correlated and you can kind of see the connection doesn't mean that one causes the other. So what is a correlation? Well, there are positive correlations there are negative correlation, nor cor correlations. Just realize that a positive correlation doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing. For instance, the more you smoke, the more you may die. The chance of dying goes up. Does that mean that that's a good thing? Like, oh, we should all smoke then, no. Or negative correla correla correlation does not necessarily mean a bad thing. For instance, the more you work out, the more weight you will lose. One's going up, one's going down. Is that a bad thing? I guess it is if you're trying to gain weight, but most people would consider that a good, a good thing. So all that correlation does tell us is positive and negative. It tells us the direction in which the graph is going. So if you remember back when we were doing slopes of lines, we made the house that slope built, right? And we said that anything going in this direction was a positive slope and anything going down like this was a negative slope. So if you look here, this is going from left to right as we read, it's positive, positive, positive. These are negative, 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 right? So what we have to talk about then, so if we look at this, we can say based on this graph, we can say this is, this first graph that we're looking at is a positive correlation. It's almost a perfect correlation. And why they say it's almost a perfect correlation is that I can draw a line and hit every single um, number, or excuse me, point on that graph. 
Whereas this one is a high correlation, 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 sorry, because while I can draw a line, it would take a pretty thick line to hit every point uh, there. So while the points are close together and close to a line, they're not perfect. And then we have a low, also known as a weak correlation, because you can kind of see that it's going up, but the line of best fit would either have to be a super fat line or, the, or a line that, the, that not all the points touch. And the same thing is true for a negative correlation. This is a low correlation or weak, because again, you can see that it's going down, but the points are not close to the line. Here is a high correlation, or also known as a strong correlation, because the points are close together, and again, this is a perfect correlation because you can draw a line that goes through all the points. Well, if Mr. Craig could draw a straight line, it would, but you can kind of see that it touches all the points. So that's called a perfect or super high. And then you finally have no correlation. A no correlation is just means when you look at the graph, I can't tell if there's a line going up or down. Either one would fit, right? I can't figure out which way, Think the, the, the dots are so all over the place that there is no way I can even see a correlation. Forget causation, we just can't even see that there's a line going in any way that we can figure out. So, when things are talked about high correlation, correla, correlation oof, cannot say the word, high correlation versus low correlation, we give them values. A perfect correlation being one, like if, for instance, 100% correlates, 0.8, think of it like it's 80%. Think of it like as a grade on a test. You got it. The, th the better the line, the higher your grade is on your test. So a perfect correlation means you get everything right 100%. Uh, 0.8 is that the line is 80% accurate. And then a 30% would be low accuracy. So if you had to make a guess, if you were making a prediction, you know, that could your life could be risked upon, which one would you prefer? Would you prefer a high correlation, a correlation or a low correlation? It seems to me like the, the more accurate your correlation was, the better chance it would be to predict what's going to happen, so you'd want to have a stronger correlation. So hopefully that helps. You can go back and look through this again. Um, we have some examples in your chart. All I need you to do for these is to look at the graph, graph the graph uh, if necessary, and decide uh, if it's a correlation if it's if the correlation is cause has causation and then is it strong or weak thank you <laughs>